On this hunt, I'm hunting elk down in central Colorado, south of a town called Leadville, which is super high elevation. But right now, I'm driving through Route County, which is where I cut my elk hunting teeth. It's also the place where I met a good buddy of mine named Ethan Cohn, who also drew the special elk tag that we're hunting this week. Ethan has been one of my biggest elk hunting mentors, pretty much taught me everything I needed to know early on about elk hunting so that I could become an elk hunting guy. Really looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy the hunt. I have three days to scout before opening day. My goal between now and then is to get a feel for the land and have a big bull located that I can go after once the season opens. This unit is special for a reason, and I've already decided I'm not going to settle for just any bull. It's not long before I find my first herd. Where when I first got here, I was thinking, man, I'm more, it feels more like mountain goat country. And sure enough, before I spotted any elk, I spotted a couple goats, which is cool. But then soon after, I spotted the first elk. There's a couple cows feeding along this ridge behind me and then out popped a herd of looks like at least 20. There's a six point bull in the bunch. He's a nice bull in any general unit. I'd be pretty excited to be chasing after him. In this unit, we're definitely looking for something a little bit bigger. In this unit, there's the opportunity to kill a really mature bull with big giant antlers. And uh, you could call it a little bit of trophy hunting. That's certainly what I'm doing. I'm going to be very excited to have a big giant set of antlers that will sit on my wall for the rest of my days. Um, obviously still going to eat the bull. I'm hoping he'll be tasty coming out of Colorado. Should be. But uh, yeah, that's the plan for today. Hang out up in these rocks and keep looking for elk keep looking for bulls. Colorado breaks up their big game seasons like this. A month of archery, which includes a week of muzzleloader hunting, and four rifle seasons. We're hunting the first rifle season in early October. The bulls should still be bugling, and we get first crack at them with rifles. It's the tail end of day number one. Probably saw 300 elk. I did see two bull moose, which was way cool. Saw a couple of nice mule deer bucks. So yeah, that's where we're at. Ja! Rastafari! I meet up with Ethan and our friend Joe to come up with a game plan for the next three days. Ethan lives in Colorado and has been an elk guide for most of his adult life. Here we go. Ethan taught me essentially everything I know about woodsmanship, but it's been 10 years since we've hunted together, so this is a much anticipated reunion. Joe is a longtime friend of ours that we've skied with for decades. It's not until recently that Joe has gotten into hunting. He's here to help and soak up as much elk knowledge as possible. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so most days we'll split up and scout solo. Blizzard all morning. Ethan and I have waited a long time to hunt in this unit. Because of the high trophy bull potential, it's a very hard to draw tag. We were able to draw by using preference points. Basically, a preference point is earned each year you strike out and don't draw. More preference points equals a higher likelihood of drawing. I'm looking at a big bunch of elk that are 3.3 miles away. Looks closer. I struck out for 13 years, so I used 13 points as a non-resident to draw. Ethan, as a resident, used 11 points. Perfect spot for glassing and napping. Parts of the unit are designated wilderness area, and we don't have a permit to film in there. Although it takes 20% of the unit out of play, we respect the wilderness designation. In order to keep everything on camera, we'll avoid those areas. I got a herd of about 20. He's got two bulls in it, but they're both youngsters. Two or three years old, maybe. One might be a very, very small six point, the other one looks like a five point. Yeah. 
back to the drawing board. Just keep looking. Before any hunt, it's smart to check your rifle zero. Transportation has a way of banging scopes out of whack. Checking our zero. We're at a very high elevation for this hunt. Very good chance that you could shoot your bull at 10, 11, 12,000 feet, and I zeroed at 3,000. And so more than likely, I'm gonna be shooting high. And I'm gonna have to click down a little bit. I'll shoot three. It's always good to set yourself up for success. The last thing you want to do a day or two before a hunt is start questioning what you got going, you know, downrange. That's perfect, buddy, in this wind. Can't beat that. It's right where it needs to be, so I'm ready to roll. I'm shooting a 180 grain bullet. It's a 300 Weatherby, 300 yard zero. I'm three inches high. Just about perfect. We're ready to hunt. Just gotta find Mongo now. Mongo, where are you? While we've seen hundreds of elk so far, neither Ethan or I have found the one we decide to strike out together for our last evening of scouting before opening day. We could go glass north and when that sun angle gets a little lower, it'll open up this stuff over here. Yeah, let's do that. Nothing? Well, no L. Um, how many years have you been guiding now? 30 years, buddy. This is the 30th? I believe so. 1990. That was year number one? Yep. So I started around, I think, either 2000 or 2001. So I got to hang out with you for the middle 10. Mm-hmm. Have you ever missed the first rifle? Guys, no, this is my vacation, buddy. This is your first ever first <laughs> rifle mm -hmm. vacation hunt. Yeah. And instead of going to like a sunny beach-like vacation hunt, we came to the rocky, windy. <laughs> New country. New country, it's nice. The wind wasn't amazing. long, we'd be sitting here singing praises. Huh? Probably listening to a couple of bugles. You know we would be. This looks too good. Let's go have some fun, hear some bugles. Yeah. You want to come back hunting here in the morning, or should we go hunt the burn? I'm easy, buddy. Probably might be the last bugles of the season for me. Let's hike while it's light. Opening morning, we decide to hunt a burned area where Ethan had located several bulls while scouting earlier in the week. It doesn't take long, and we're listening to elk. Oh, I 
got quiet quick. Yeah. The wind never settles, and eventually, all of the bulls have smelled us, shut up, and left the country. For those suckers to shut off like that, it's because they yeah. smelled smell the rat. You just heard another one? No, timber popping. Oh, right there. Don't move, don't move. In the metal spiker. Oh, yeah. That was that timber you heard popping. <laughs> is he chasing that mule deer? He is. <laughs> he's confused. Yeah, he's after that muley doe. That was fun. Engaging, buddy. When they go from how they were bugling to stone cold, you know it's uh, yeah, the wind. Why do they call it still hunting when you're moving? That's a very good question. I've always called it from a kid is squirrel hunting when we're going elk hunting we're going yeah. out we're we're going squirrel hunting because that's how we learn to sneak around in the woods if you can take that squirrel hunting pace into the woods yes and keep the wind right you're usually going to bump into something I do it for those dudes, you know. I still do it because I want those guys to have a good experience and a good hunt. That, and if I ever lose that, then it's time to like take, up, right? take up duck hunting or something. <laughs> I always knew you as like a pretty mellow hunter that wasn't like too worried about like knocking down a bunch of bulls. But, like, did you ever have that as a young guide where you were like, I got to get a bunch of them killed? I think in my 20s, mid-20s to mid-30s, there was a time in there of guiding where it was like, have two hunters, kill two bulls, go grab someone else's hunter, go out and kill another one. Just like, let's go, let's get after them. But as you get older, you just enjoy the little things in the woods and you're not quite as bloodthirsty and you enjoy watching them and seeing them and seeing them do their thing and mm -hmm. it's not so much of i gotta i gotta get them back to the pickup kind of thing oh for me it's almost become anticlimactic you know me i'm kind of the old traditionalist the hunt's about hanging with your buddies and having a good time in the woods and the camaraderie and the fellowship Everything else is just the, the cherry on top. This country is amazing. You can go to 13,000 feet above tree line and see elk. You know how it is. Come right back at daylight and be ripping. Or not. seen elk from a distance, came up here first light, saw a single bull, figured the rest of the herd's with him, didn't see how big the bull was, we're making a move to get a little closer and uh, hopefully get an eyeball on him. He's a decent one. He's still on him? Oh yeah, he's okay. walking slow. Nice. Yeah, small six. Yeah.
bet. His tongue's already hanging out. Oh, I bet. Well, we saw a bull. We did. This far away, small bull, we'll let him go. Sometimes I root for the elk a little bit, you know what I mean? I do. It's tough scratching out a living in this windy rock pile. Ethan and I decide to split up for the evening and he heads back to the region we've come to call the burn. Maybe we ought to shoot one tonight if we see one. We gotta find them first. I think Yanni and I, we've kind of grown into a little different style of hunting. I'm not so much of a big open country, spend a lot of time on big glass looking for animals. I like to kind of get in the timber, read the sign. Not that there's anything better one way or the other. It's probably better to be well-rounded to hunt open country and have the patience and the skill set to look through your optics a lot. But it probably comes from the way I was raised too. Grew up hunting in the woods and that's what I'm comfortable with. You ever heard the old saying, you stand out like a turd on a linoleum floor? <laughs> That's kind of how I feel sometimes in this burn. <laughs> the wind's good though. Ooh. He's gonna come down, buddy. We better go hide our turds. <laughs> get him off this linoleum floor and get out of this sun. Ethan sits down behind a makeshift blind and waits for the elk to come to him. That sound you just heard is called an alarm bark. And it's the last thing you want to hear during prime time. Not only does it mean you've been made, it also puts every other elk with an earshot on high alert. I wish he'd bugle again. That spike barking didn't help our cause much. That ball bugles again, it sounds like he's still Day two, we're gonna wait. He's a nice small six, but let's keep on. That's how I like to hunt. It's the third morning of the hunt. Uh, Ethan and I split up 
Right now I got four cows high up on the horizon here above tree line. I'm sure there's a bull in the bunch. Instead of waiting to see what happens, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep pushing on and gain some elevation and uh, hopefully get a closer look. Oh shit! Big herd. Big herd. Um, right over the horizon. They're coming right down into here. Um, big herd. I'm gonna put the spot and scope on and see if there's a bull in there. All right, there's a pretty good, pretty good bull in the back. Um, we need to get a closer look, but I think he's a shooter. Um, they're a long ways away. They might be coming into, this, into the drainage I'm in. They might end up staying high and going over. Um, either way, I feel like I need to make a move. Luckily, I've got a pretty good ridge coming down from my right. So if I just sneak right, maybe 50, 100 yards through these willows, I'll be able to have the ridge between me and the elk and at least close some distance and start closing the distance because, you know, who knows where we're gonna end up, but I need to stay on, stay with them. They're all gonna disappear here pretty soon. They're on the horizon, but they're looking this direction. Maybe they'll be coming back this way. As soon as I see the last one disappear on the horizon, I'm just gonna to head toward this little hump on the back side of it. This is always a little sketchy because now they're out of sight, don't know where they are. I gotta make a very exposed move right now for a couple hundred yards. Um, unfortunately, it's one thing you have to do sometimes is assume the animals are doing what, what you hope they're gonna do. So yeah, straight up, hopefully peek over and be looking down on them. It's very stressful. You try not to think about the 13 or 14 years it took to apply to get this tag. Those points you saved, all those dreams of big bulls you had. Just try to stay focused on the hunt. It just gets stressful when you can't see them. You don't know which way they've gone. They are heading this way. If they get by me, they're gonna win me. So I gotta stay, stay ahead of them. Whew. It's tough making these sneaks. I don't think I'm quite at 12,000 feet, but if I end up on that ridge where I was elk are, I'll be at 12,000 feet. I get impatient and keep moving up the mountain. I circle the whole mountaintop and find the elk in the original bowl I was in. Had I stayed put, they'd be feeding right toward me. But I think they're moving left. Luckily, when I find them, the terrain offers the perfect feature to hide my approach. I stay low and hustle. Two seventy, two eighty, five point, which is sweet. I mean, he dwarfs the little, the small bull, the small five point that's with him. It's a pretty special thing to be this close, three hundred yards away from a big bunch of elk like this. A couple of them have actually bedded down. It's gonna give me some time to think about pulling the trigger.
this unit has the possibility of holding a giant in here and uh, you don't get these opportunities often which is what you have to remember and I'm gonna let this guy walk not gonna shoot him today great hunt great hunt no regrets at all that I didn't shoot that bull I'm very happy it's pretty rad you know what else is rad is that I'm in my 40s, I've got my health and the opportunity just to go walking across big alpine basins at 12,000 feet, enjoy these beautiful Colorado views. It's sick. We're very lucky. It's the second to last day of hunting for us. Ethan and I have split up again, and he heads out to an area called Jackson Creek to follow up on some bulls we saw last night. That one right in front of you. You're 12 o'clock. And we just walked up on this small four by five. I've spent a good portion of my life losing sleep analyzing and overthinking and trying to outsmart these suckers and this morning I'm all pissed off because I had to walk through a cottonwood stand in the spring this guy could care less sometimes a little noise helps in the elk woods sometimes it kills you that bull I passed on the night before last was quite a bit bigger than this guy That's the guy we want to get a look at. This is kind of where I wanted to be at daylight, but we got into elk on our way here and there's an old elk hunting proverb, don't pass up elk to go hunt elk, so so now we're out here, we're gonna get wind burnt, maybe a little sunburnt, and do some glassing. There's the glassing turret right here. This is a little sniper's roost. All the way across this drainage, we've got like 60 head. So we're gonna make the big approach and see if we can at least get a closer look. I love it when your elk hunt turns into a sheep hunt. I feel like the terrain we're in and the mileage we're putting in, we're hunting sheep. It looked like they're angling up. I'm thinking of going high and try to get above them. Right there, the wind's coming down. When in doubt, gain some elevation. There's a big one, I can see the top of his horns. He, he went from our left to right, and I could just see the top of his horns and his back. There's two small six points, a small five by five, and a really nice, bigger, heavier five by five. He's a nice five point. He's broken off on the right side. But he's a mature bull for sure. And considering how far we are from the truck, I think we're gonna let him walk. Been a good hunt though. Finally caught up and got in the middle of them. It's our last day of hunting and I've headed out solo to an area recommended by a local. 
There's two giant herds. One looks like it's 70 to 100 strong. The other one, I only caught half of it. I saw at least 30 in that one. The thought of another big alpine push is a little daunting, but definitely could do it. I just got a text from Ethan and he said he's in the magic circle. The magic circle means that you've got bulls bugling all around you. So hopefully it pans out. He says he's passed on a couple little ones, but uh, there's some growlers in the bunch, so he's trying to get on them. Sure enough, it's not long before Ethan texts me that he's got a bull down. Joe and I meet Ethan at the trailhead to help with the pack out. And I went ahead and butchered him and got him on logs and got him bagged. And uh, I'm, I'm just about redlined. <laughs> I'd get into a bunch and like, I'd have cows at 40 yards, 50 yards, 20 yards, chirping, chirping. And I was cranking on my reed calls, like loud, loud. And they were eating it up. And uh, boy, I'd have one bugle and I'd get ready and get set up and try to pick out a shooting lane in the timber. Spikes, cows, little four point, passed on several small bulls. Got in close on that growler again. I had him like 50 yards in thick timber. And I'm, I can hear him walking and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I got cows around me. And sure enough, the wind swirled. They all took off and I'm gonna be chasing them all the way to the top of the peak. I don't know what time this was, nine o'clock at this point. I'm gonna start heading back towards the truck. Start angling across this bench, and I hear this and he's laying down. And I peeked up over the edge, and I see a horn. And it's a five-point horn, and it turned, and I slid over on my butt, and like 50 yards, shot him in the shoulder, laying in his bed. He's a nice five-by, right side's broken about halfway up. Broken but, ale, maybe. Yeah, I didn't see that side. It's, but you know, the last day, good way to yeah. end a five day unbelievable elk hunt. That must have been a hell of a herd, man. That place is mowed out. And it just stomped. Turn. There you go. Where is there? Yes, he's a fighter. That's all, this is all I saw in his bed. If our hunt had ended here, yes, as Ethan said, the hunt is all about hanging with your buddies and having a good time in the woods. Just re I did have one evening left to find my own bull. And from my scout this morning, I knew just where to find them. But there was a problem. The elk I spotted this morning were in a wilderness area. Wilderness areas have special rules about commercial filming and don't give film permits readily. As I mentioned earlier, we did not have a permit to film in the wilderness area. Without a plan B, and a tag I waited 13 years to draw, about to run out, I decided to hunt the big herd without a camera. It was an amazing evening in the high country, capped by me shooting this bullet 50 yards. I'm sorry you couldn't see the action, but those are the rules. Wilderness areas are special because of the tight rules. I encourage you to go spend time in one and bring a friend. You won't be disappointed.